year's uh, 2020 campaign. I would like to thank everyone that participated in the Freighter Raffle this year. It's been a great success. We raised over $41,000. We were able to sell the tickets in just under three weeks. There was a lot of coverage, and I think a lot of folks were just kind of trapped in the pandemic. So thanks for everyone's support, and this really makes a big difference to area. So thank you very much. With that, I'm going to turn the drum here a couple times and draw the big winners.
big hunk of steel. Standing out here at one point and record him hitting the whistle. Yeah, yeah. Look at the size of those things. You ever hear a Jim uh, James Barker horn? No. Oh man, uh, that's the best one. Yeah. It's got like you can hear the lungs opening up. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just. Well, real deep one. Yeah, I yeah. like the real deep yeah, one. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, this is a good one too. With that barker, it's the barker bark. Hmm. I got some real good recordings years ago of the Chief Wawatam steam oh. whistle. Oh, 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 oh. That was big too. Yeah, I'm gonna do this often. Yeah. said go wherever you want. Yeah, that's, that's it's true. true. You know, it's like, that's pretty broad, man. You know? Just don't do anything risky. Exactly. Yeah. I like that. anytime we want so we're gonna go up there in a little while now that we're out and down the lake you can't hardly tell that the thing's even moving but we're going 15 and a half miles an hour Six hatches. No skid paint. That's kind of cool. These are vents for the ballast tanks. Okay. And then number two, this is the one that that had all the damage when they were breaking their way out of Green Bay. They actually got to the Sioux and pumped it out and the ballast water was running right out of a big, huge crack.
wonder if they got a whistle up here too. Probably not. Those lights, uh, well, those are the line of lights up there. Oh, yeah. I wonder if that's signal. Coast. Get your guys a picture. If you hear a loudspeaker, tell me. Oh, come on, you guys, you got to see this. Keweenaw Point. That's what you see over there. It was supposed to be southeast winds 15 to 25, but it never happened. We had about two or three foot waves after we left Whitefish, and then it just slowly died down. Look at how rugged the shore is there on the Keweenaw. It's looking towards Carpa Harbor.
there's the Palter girth across the bay. So we backed under that lift bridge, come out here and turned around on the turning basin. And then we headed over and out under the lift bridge. It's pretty cool. She's powered by 8,200 horsepower.
in honor of the vice chairman of Israel Steamship Company, the Tregurza is known as the Queen of Lakes for being the longest vessel on the Great Lakes. She was built in two sections, which were joined at American Shipbuilding Flooring Yard, aiming that shipyard's launch three of Great Lakes shipbuilding. The Tregurza was built for $60 million and became the flagship of Interlake Steamship. She was rechristened with her current name in 1990 to reflect Interlake's newer owners. The Tregurza is departing with a load of coal today, and her next destination is St. Clair, Michigan. If you see any crew on board, give them a big wave and wish them a safe voyage. Once again, this was Paul R. Tregurza. She was built in 1981 and measures 1,013 feet and 6 inches in length. She has a maximum carrying capacity of 71,300 tons. She is departing with a load of coal, and her next destination will be St. Clair, Michigan.
treats that those cooks make, the baking and the, the chocolates, and <laughs> oh my gosh. We have like a whole table of desserts down there, like how much do they do all <laughs> I know, I know. Everything's been really good. No, no, they do a great job. Yeah. Uh, the cheesecake. the binnacle? No. It's all done by the autopilot? 
are actually in backwards. All right, so you got your crank and it's coming out the front of the engine instead of uh, the, the back side. So it's, they're in backwards, it comes out the front of the engine, it's into that reduction gear and clutch assembly. So the engine is 514 RPMs, and then it comes down to that reduction gear, it's 117 at the main shaft going out the bolt. Is that a V drive where the shaft turn around goes the other way? Um, it must be. Not really a V drive, more like a U drive. Oh. Um, yeah, but they've never really called it any of that. They just stuck it in there and said, "This is what you got." I'm amazed that that's all the RPMs of the prop that it takes to get this thing to move. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and a lot of it too is it's up the controllable pitch propeller. All right. That shaft on the, underneath the bottom of the engine has actually got four hollow tubes in it, which control the hydraulics, which moves the blades on, on that the prop there. So you can crank it up to as much pitch as you want to get your speed. If you back the, down the pitch, you can go right to zero pitch, still move the engine, hit the shaft at 500 or uh, 117 and not go anywhere. Can you go full forward to full reverse yeah, on the same we, rotation? We when we repowered, they made us, the Coast Guard had us do that. To see, we had to stop in a certain amount of feet doing that, an emergency stop. And, and yes, we can and we've done it. It's not pretty. Is it hard on <laughs> stuff? Huh? Is it hard on it, stuff? It's amazing how much fell apart because you're bouncing so ah, bad ah, ah, when you're going from ah, full ahead to full start. It just, it rattled shit loose that never come loose before. Ah, like, well, we're not going to do that again. <laughs> But we did satisfy the Coast Guard uh, uh, test doing that. Uh, so when you go from forward to reverse then, say you're coming into the dock or whatever, do you take it out of gear and then how do you get to reverse without, that, that, without turning it over the other the, way? That's the pitch of the propeller. Okay. The hydraulic, the pitch on them blades can actually do about 180 degrees and flop it right around. So you're still going to do 170 or whatever RPM you want on the shaft, and it's still going to be that same direction. But if the blades themselves, they go completely backwards, it'll give you your reverse pitch. Oh, cool. Well, neat. Very interesting. And you have to do that. you got to take your time on that. you got to... And these captains have been doing this for years. They've been training for years. They know how long it takes, when to start slowing down in order to go into your reverse. They've got it right down to a science. And then they hand down that tribal knowledge to all their trainees. Um, this is how you want to do this. And if you don't do it this way, you're going to have problems. <laughs> yeah. um, so you said two propellers, two runners. Yes. Yep. And two engines. Yep. Two V drives. That's where they're in their backwards. Yes. I'm really surprised. Is, you you won't see too many big. like that in, in backwards like that. That keeps your more cargo hold storage room, doesn't right. it? Right, that, that's more for space. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's strategically designed for space that way. Interesting, very cool. Very cool. What a neat place to work. How long have you been on here? Probably 20 years now. With this, with this boat? On this boat, close to 20, with the company, 30 years. Okay. July, July 13th will yeah. be 30 years. Wow. We, so you were here when they did that Mighty Ship show coming out of Green Bay. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was here for that one. God, that was, yeah. That's the best show they ever did. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I think I, I'm even part of that video down in the engine room. Yeah, um, oh yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. That was a long the, time That ago. was well done, it really was. Yeah. Uh, now, the, 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 the problem with that, they, they talked me through a lot of stuff, what they wanted, then they asked me some questions. And they edited out the best questions. They asked me, one of the questions is, want to know what was the best day I had out here? And I said, when I go home. <laughs> she didn't like that one. <laughs> it was. She, yes, it was. And then she asked me, well, what's the worst day you had out here? I said, when I come back. <laughs> they, 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 left yeah, that, that was, they left that out of mighty shit. Was that so the end of the interview right yep, there? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't much more help after that. <laughs> What a last it again. What was the worst day? <laughs> uh, the, the worst day was when we had a fire here. Oh, I mean, I've never had any day worse than that. Oh, we nice. had we had a major engine room fire up on a generator. Generator itself got on fire. Oh, oh no! It, it, it got scary. It could have been a lot worse. Luckily, we had just gone to anchor, 
So nothing was running except that one generator. Oh. If we were transiting the river or going through a bridge or anything, but it was scary enough being at anchor, and then we lost communication with the one engineer that we thought was down. Oh. Uh, but luckily he came out all right. Oh, um, but the fire was so intense, you saw all them CO2 extinguishers, we had to use them to put the fire up. Wow. Uh, and then even after we used it, all that CO2, we still had lingering fires that were not put up. We had to come back down and, and, and put the fires out. So it's gotta be hard to come down here with all the smoke. No, it was, and it happened so fast. I was, I, we just went to anchor and I left. The watch standing engineer was up by the purifiers, the scrubbers, they just got done securing them. Walked around up there and there was nothing. He come back down here, he was here, so I left up to my room and I'm standing in my room and the fire alarm goes off. So I come racing down and in that amount of time, I could not come down those stairs. Oh, it was black. Oh, wow. Black with smoke, the lights were out, you could not see nothing. What was it doing, spraying fuel everywhere? Fuel, all of it, fuel and I think maybe even antifreeze. Oh. The antifreeze has got alcohol in it. So, and then it was an electrical fire after that. So, oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Where were we anchored? Uh, just north of the locks. Uh -huh. we, were, we had we had bad news fog. The locks, were, the, the whole river was closed in the fog. Uh, yeah, luckily we were at anchor. Yeah. Yeah, the one time I heard them cavitating was when they were coming down on that show through the rock cut. Okay. And they had to back off the RPMs because right. it was getting too shallow or taking uh, too it, much push. When it when it gets shallow, and you'll feel it again this time coming back down even more so because we're loaded and we're only we're going to be less than two feet from the bottom of the river there we're going through that rock on so they've got to take it very easy and uh you may feel some cavitation how much do they back off going through there whatever they want to do whatever it takes i gotcha but until the noise is, goes away yeah <laughs> uh, until he's, he's got to maintain control of the ship as long as he maintains control he's got to be in control and not the current very cool that's a heck of a tour. Thank you very much. Oh, it's just best part of the tour. Oh, it is. Yeah. We've it's been waiting. We've been waiting and chomping at the bit. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll take three of you back up and then come back down for the other three.
Okay. an hour don't you do that that way uh, at max capacity when everything's running great we can unload at 10,000 an hour but most places we can do all fine it's nice when we can dump underground because then we can run it wide open St. Clair and Monroe we're kind of limited to five yeah. yeah they got behind on their conveyor belt this time didn't they that's a cool <laughs> Considering where we are. 